okay the globe by lig hunt analysis and interpretation of the poems presented by narayan dakal the globe and the lines by ligand the globe and the lines by ligand is a four stanza poem first published in the new monthly magazine in london england in may of 1836 the poem follows a simply structured rhyme scheme of a b b c c d d throughout each stanza this gives the piece a sing song like melody and keeps the intense climax of the poem from changing the overall tone the speaker's voice is light hearted and good natured throughout there is no real spite on the side of the king nor any constructed malice on the side of the lady he loves the poet is seeking to tell a story of how love and one's need for attention and validation can shape one's actions and stress them beyond that which might seem appropriate okay the poem is going to be analyzed uh, stanza wise first is stanza stanza 1 the text is here let's listen the text first king francis was a hardy king and loved the royal sport look at the rhyming scheme over sport here uh, and one day as his lines fought said looking on the court the nobles filled the benches and the ladies in their pride and amongst them sat the county lords with one for whom he sighed and truly it was a gallant thing to see that crowning so valor and love and a king above and the royal beast below let's see the stanza first stanza analysis listen it carefully the poem begins with the speaker describing a king francis name of the king is francis okay and the courtesans means the people who are sitting there that surround him the reader enters the poem into a setting which is normal for the times but outlandish scene outlandish scene to a modern audience one is immediately informed that the king is not a bad man he is hardy and seemingly good natured on this particular occasion he is with the royal court watching one of his favorite sporting activities lion fighting he is surrounded by aristocrats lords and ladies in their pride everyone is attending this event and is at their best there is one couple among them that draws the special attention of the king the county lords and his love she is the one for whom the king sighed francis is infatuated with the wife or lover of a noble in his court taking a brief step back from the love story that is central to the plot of this short narrative the speaker describes how the fight is progressing he states that it is a gallant thing to see the crowning so it is quite the royal event something the common people would never have been able to see the whole stadium like arrangement is filled with valor and love and is stopped up by the king who is looking down on the royal beast below him the beast to which the speaker refers can reference both the lions and the nobles who must fight among, among us themselves for the king's favor okay stanza 2 this is text rammed and roared the lions with hoary laughing jaws they bite they glared grape they blows like beams of wind wind with their paws with wallowing might and stifled roar they rolled one another till all the pit with sand and men was in a thunderous smother the bloody foam above the above the bars came whisking through the air said francis then fair gentlemen we are better here than there okay analysis of second stanza the second stanza describes the atmosphere of the flight itself the lines are quite vicious and roared with horrid laughing jaws they begin to fight and peer into one another their blows are strong like beams and the wind seems to move alongside her paws they are alongside their paws okay not here paws they are rolling around on the floor and causing a serious commotion 
from where the king is sitting he is impressed by the sublimeness of the moment he is completely out of harm's way but is able to experience the bloody foam that comes whisking through the air in a distance distant and haughty way he amusingly states that he had he and those around him are better off here than there in the pit with the lions the lord's love overheard the king of beauteous lively dame with smiling lips and sharp bright eyes which always seemed the same dame same there is rhyming scheme she thought the count my lover is brave as brave can be he surely would do wondrous things to show his love of me king ladies lovers all look on the occasion is divine i will drop my gloves to prove his love great glory will be mine now analysis of this stanza one can assume as is often the case that the noble chuckled at the king's comment one of these nobles the lover of the lord was specially entertained by the king's wit she turns and looks at him and smiles with her beauteous lips and sharp bright eyes she sees the king and is perhaps struck by his grandeur and strength she suddenly feels as if she must chase her own lover the lord to see if he too is as brave as the king seems to be she wants to be proven right that he is brave as brave can be and that he would do wondrous things to show his love she comes to the conclusion that she will drop her glove into the pit with the lions in the hope that the lord will jump in and retrieve it for her the fourth stanza she dropped her glove to prove his this is text okay to prove his love then looked at him and smiled he bowed and in a moment lived among the lions wild smiled wild the leave was quick return was quick he has regained his place the threw the, then threw the globe but not with love right in the lady's face place and face the rhyme by god said francis rightly john and he rose from where he sat no love quote he but vanity sets love or talk task like that set that okay analysis of it the lord's dodge as she intended he smiles at her bows and the lips among the lines wild he moves so quickly that they are unable to toss him he is back regaining his place as a lover before anyone has time to react so far things have gone to plan but the lord was not amused by this gesture he does not express his love in this moment instead he throws the glove at her face and states that he is rightly done with her he rises once more and leaves the arena the lord seems to be the only one in this scenario that has a healthy outlook on what the relationship should be he understands that she did not really make this gesture in the hopes of having his love for her validated but instead as a way of getting attention and indulging her vanity he sits the same and strides away from the king and noble he does not believe that love would set a task like that okay this is the final part this is the summary of the poem the globe and the lines by lig hunt describes the dangerous games of love that are played in the royal court of the king yo lig hunt dwara likhieko jun kavita the globe and the lines ma jo prem ko bare ma euta esto khatarnak khel ko bare ma chitran gariyeko cha jo raja ko royal court ma chai eslai dekhaiyeko cha and the consequence of going too far त्यसबाट पर गइसकेपछि जो परिणाम आउँछ त्यो परिणामलाई पनि यसमा चाहिँ प्रस्तावना खोजिएको छ द पोएम बिगिन्स विथ द स्पीकर डिस्क्राइबिंग द इभेन्ट दैट द रोयल कोर्ट किंग इन्क्लुडेड आर एटेंडिंग अब यो कवितामा खास गरेर स्पीकर कवि आफै छन् जसले चाहिँ एउटा घटनाको बारेमा वर्णन गरेर खोज्दै छन् त्यो घटना भनेको रोयल कोर्टमा भएको घटना हो जहाँ किंगलाई समावेश गरिएको छ र अन्य किंग सहित अन्य भारदारहरू अर्थात उनका सहयोगीहरू त्यहाँ चाहिँ उपस्थित छन् इट इज अ फाइट बिटवीन टू लाइन्स एन्ड अल यो त्यो त्यहाँ चाहिँ खेल भनेको चाहिँ दुईटा लाइनहरूको लडाइँ छ र अन्यहरू पनि छन् अल आर दियर टू सी इट प्ले आउट जो त्यो लाइनहरूको लडाइँलाई चाहिँ हेर्नको लागि अन्य मानिसहरू त्यहाँ बसिरहेका छन् द किङ हिमसेल्फ फ्रान्सिस राजा फ्रान्सिस हुन् इज अ फ्यान अफ दिस पार्टिकुलर स्पोर्ट यो विशेष खालको खेलमा चाहिँ राजा आफै अत्यन्तै इच्छुक अर्थात उनी अत्यन्तै बढी चाहना राख्ने गर्दछन् बट हिज एटेन्सन इज स्लाइट तर उनको ध्यान भने त्यतातिर छैन अर्थात उनको ध्यान अन्यत्र गएको छ 
he is amazed by the brutality of the fight and the fact that he is able to observe it from safety. Only to jo lonai, to pasivik jo lonai cha, to say line or go bisco, ra to only only you grab up any atom mandas and get to brutality, to lonai go brutality like saying, egg them a surochi to stand but saying, observe Gornosaki Kuta, oblogon Gornosaki Kuta. On the other hand, or Kotira, he is distracted by the beauty of one of one for whom he sighs. संगसंगे उनको दृश्य लाई, उनको नजर बने को जहाँ सही त्यो बीस सर को लड़ाई में केंद्रित भाई को सत्यो संगसंगे उनको दृश्य बने को ये वड़ा अत्यंत सुंदर महिला में केंद्रित भाई को था, she is the lover of another lord, उन्हीं कुने ये वड़ा और को मानिस को प्रेमी क्या होन? The lady herself is distracted by the valor of the king, त्यो राजा को भालोर बाटा उन्हीं पनी distracted भाई की चीन त्यो दृश्य अर्थात राजा पट्टी उनको पनि आँखा जुदिरहेको हुन्छ एन्ड डिसाइडेड टु सेट अ टास्क फर अ लभर अब त्यसपछि उनले चाहिँ आफ्नो लभरलाई एउटा काम दिनको लागि निश्चय गरिन् शी ड्रप्स हर ग्लोब इन्टु द लायन पिट त्यो लायनहरु जहाँ चाहिँ लडाई लडिरहेका छन् त्यो लायन पिट मा चाहिँ उनले आफ्नो ग्लोब फसाइदिन् इन द होप्स दैट ही विल जम्प इन एन्ड रिट्रीव इट फर हर यो आशामा कि उनको प्रेमीले त्यहाँबाट गएर त्यो ग्लोबलाई चाहिँ झिकेर ल्याइदिनेछ he judges just this. Gara da garcha, but he's not pleased with her actions. Tara, unko yu kamur bada gu kati pani khushi hoda na. He throws her glove in her face. Unko mukmane tiyo glove or la thakini cha and lips tayari na. Tees pachi tiyo eri na bada uni anetra chara jantan. He does not believe that any true lover would take such a task. Unle yu kura ma vishwaas garna sakta na ki kunai pani yoda chai satya premi le. Ata tiyo true love garda sa tiyo bhekti le. Tis to kisim ko task aapne chai premi ka le chai. This is the end part of this story. Thank you very much.